You will need to unmute yourself. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay, sorry. Welcome to the October the 19th, 2020 Design Review Committee meeting for Montpelier. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves by speaking their names. Ben Cheney. Martha Smirsky. Anna Smith. Eric Yalbertson. And Meredith Crandall, staff. I have my video off right now so that the audio will work Steve better. Everett. Oh, sorry, Steve. <laughs> okay, good. Would, before we move to the agenda, would Meredith like to review the remote meeting procedures? Yes. Let me do a quick share screen for people watching via Orca. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, so for those viewing this meeting via ORCA, you can participate in the Design Review Committee meeting via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options as follows. There is the join the Zoom meeting link here. Um, alternatively, you can call this phone number and use the meeting ID here and the password here to log in. Um, with either of those options, you'll be able to um, comment on the applications that are being discussed and you can call in at any time that this meeting is open. So the agenda and meeting materials are available on the city website at this link if you don't have them already. Um, if anybody has a problem accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, and if you're having difficulties while you're accessing the video conferencing features in Zoom, um, you can message me through the chat function. This Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning your video on is optional. Public testimony will be taken verbally. The chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions as noted above. Um, and the chat will be added to the public record if it's used. Please keep your microphone on mute when you are not speaking to reduce background noise. And for those participating by phone, star six can allow you to mute or unmute if you don't otherwise have a mute button on your phone. Um, as a host, I can also manually mute and unmute most participants. Sometimes it doesn't work. If you're interested in speaking on a particular matter and did not say you would like to speak previously, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your Zoom toolbar. For those on the phone, you can press star nine to have that pop up in the Zoom feature. Um, and if none of those is working, you can also unmute yourself and just state your name. Uh, once the chair has recognized you to participate, please unmute your microphone, confirm that you can be heard, and provide your full name and address for the record. When we did these in person, we would have sign-in sheets. We don't have those anymore. Um, so I need your full name and address for the record so that we can get back in touch with you if need be. You then We ask you then to keep questions or comments to two minutes, um, and then there'll be an opportunity for back and forth discussion. Um, the, once you're done, the chair will call the next person to speak, and you can provide additional input after, but only after the chair recognizes you. Um, if in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. And if you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video, as I have had to do today, or closing other applications on your phone or computer. If you're having trouble seeing the document screen share, all these files are uploaded to the agendas and minutes page for this meeting on the city website. You can email me if you need a link to that. Um, please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. Um, I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Anybody had a chance to look at the agenda? And if so, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda from the committee members? So moved, Eric. 
Do I hear a second? I'll second it. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. Anna. And Steve. So unless anybody has anything else to add, we can move forward for a school street. Oh, okay, I'm gonna um, pull this application up on the share screen. I know, um, and just for, for people's uh, information, Austin did send me a couple more photos um, that I can share on the screen when we get to that point. Just let me know when. Okay, is, is someone there from School Street to describe the application? Uh, yes, this is Austin Kate. Oh, hi, Austin. Hi. Go ahead and describe the heat pump, the outside compressor and the location. Sure, so it's uh, <clears throat> the outside compressor unit is um, relatively standard for, for a residential heat pump. Um, I think it's a little under three feet by two feet tall and about 15 inches deep. Um, it'll be mounted about three and change feet above ground level. Um, it will be um, on, if everyone's familiar with School Street, uh, our building is next to the funeral home. So there's a driveway between our building and the funeral home. It will be uh, to the side of our driveway um, there. Um, so it will be viewable. You could see it from the sidewalk on School Street. Um, yeah, so where that tree is, it'll be like under, yeah, exactly, right there. Um, so it's pretty well tucked out of the way, but you will be able to see it um, if you from the street. Um, some of the other photos that I sent Meredith just today show the angle a little bit better. Um, anyway, it will be connected inside to a uh, common area. I'll be keeping the basement from freezing as well as uh, a front hallway um, at a reasonable temperature. Yeah, so that gray blob that I drew on there. Um, so there's like a, a little porch behind that you can see that sticks out. But that, I don't know if that orange shrub will end up going away or just being trimmed, but it'll be right in, in that space. And then the pipes will actually, um, there's a window back there uh, into the basement that it doesn't have glass in it. It used to be used for the old kerosene system in the basement. Um, we're going to run the pipes in through that opening. So won't be any other disruption in that area. Will this unit heat one of the, will it heat, uh, pump, heat, heat one of the units in the building or just the basement area? No, it'll be just for the common area. So it's, it's the basement and the front uh, entryway area. Um, there has been some expressed interest by some of the owners in doing heat pump heating in, in the relatively near future. And we would probably try to put them in the same area if it, when we get there. But um, uh, it might just be one, actually. It wouldn't make sense to put more than one there because of where the units are. But um, but this unit is just for the, the association part of the building. Okay. Which is, is mounted, metered separately. Is it mounted by a bracket to the building? That is the current plan um, to mount it with a bracket. Um, I don't know. I didn't see anything in the application about guidance with ground mount versus bracket, but the installer we intend to use prefers bracket. Um, mounting, but uh, I, I imagine we could do either if it was. The, the bracket works very well. Is this a Mitsubishi unit? Um, this one is a higher. Um, oh, okay. But uh, okay. <coughs> the uh, the bracket, it, the, the installer swears by the bracket. Um, so that's where we're headed. The bracket works very well unless there's a uh, snow and ice load issue, but otherwise it's fine. Okay. Well, it's good good to hear that. I personally don't have the, <laughs> the knowledge to 
carry on a superb conversation on that topic. But. Which is kind of a question I have. It's hard to tell. Is it is this on an eave side? Yeah, so the snow does come off here, um, but it's relatively <coughs> high up, so it usually shoots out a ways. Um, we may have to um, put a deflector above the unit um, of some uh, a cover, but I'm hoping it's tucked in enough. I actually didn't think to take a measurement of that. There we go. Yeah, and also I guess how representative your gray blob really was of its size in relationship to that window. Yeah, I think the size was close, but it would be offset from the building and that probably wasn't well represented by a flat gray blob. <laughs> they're, um, usually, they're usually only offset from the building six to eight inches on yeah. those bracket mounts. <laughs> That's that's pretty standard, and then it's the the width of the unit, which is seldom over ten or tw yeah. 12, 12 inches in depth. Yeah, I can look that up. I guess I have some concerns about it being in the drip line, uh, and then the water pounding off the top of it around that window. Just sure. Yeah, I, I understand that. Building. Um. Yeah, it wouldn't. Do you want me to go back to the other picture? No, I was I was just trying to think. We had we recently had well a few years ago. It put some gutters on part of the building, but it wasn't there, so I I, I couldn't remember if it was or not. Um, but I understand what you're saying, Ben. That does does make sense, and um, I'll definitely talk with the installer about that and figure out the right approach there. Yep. Is, is there any reason you don't put it around the corner behind the building, out of the way of the eave and view? So the back of the building is actually like 60 or 80 feet away um, where the uh, where that porch is. The building steps out towards the funeral home and then goes back another, uh, I guess, 60 feet, but I don't, don't have a measured drawing handy. Can so... Can just you distance. Your wise. arrow on this, where it's going to be in this. Uh, yeah. Stuff now. Oh, hold. Yep. Yeah, um. So there's that little window where the vents will go in. Yeah. So it'll be between those two back windows. That's actually a, a, a unless you can move it further down, that's probably a good spot to mount it between the windows, and then that gives you the option of mounting a little. <laughs> maybe a 45 degree slope protector above it to deflect the water and or ice and snow. Yeah. And I would imagine that tree is due for some trimming as, as well while I'm looking at this picture. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we can't come too far forward because you can see there's, there's vents for some tankless water heaters in the basement. Um, yes. <clears throat> and we want to be a ways back from those. So I'm not sure if there's additional information that I should share. Duct work from the from the, the the compressor unit itself. Where does that go? Yeah, it'll go through that window. That's yeah. uh, that in the the foundation window, yeah. um, and into into the foundation right there. Yeah. Hold on, I've got a different. I pasted these into a word document. It'll be easier to see. There's that one, so it's going to go right about there, right, Austin? Yeah, yeah, right between those two windows there. Yeah. And then there. Yeah, so you can see that <clears throat> right in front of the edge of the porch is where that window is, where the, the pipes, the coolant lines are. I guess the, <laughs> it's hard to call it coolant when it's also hot sometimes, but I guess that's what coolant does. The refrigerant lines, that's the word I'm looking for. Now you can mount that as low as possible, and again, leaving that to the installer, 
mounted as low as possible to allow for snow depth below it. So it will operate during the winter if it's a, uh, if it's a hyper temp so that it can operate at very low temperatures. Uh, but if you mount it as low as possible, that gives you the chance to put a small pitch above it, about a, a foot, foot yeah. and a half again to deflect water, snow and ice. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we do have to keep it up just a little bit because of the flood elevation. Um, yes. We're we're really close here um, okay. to the numbers. Uh, they're in the application, but I, I think the line is like a couple inches up the siding. I got to go measure it again, but. No, that's fine. Any committee members have any further questions about the installation of the heat pump? All right, I, the, I've asked my question, but this is a pretty visible location uh, for it. And we do in our guidelines try to have them where they're not visible from the street. I couldn't see an alternate if you can't move it back. Austin, you said that some of the owners are thinking about heat pumps. Would, would they be anywhere near this one in terms of their location, if that, that came to be? Yeah, so one of them would probably be limited to a similar location. Um, the other two units are in the back, or ours, which is upstairs, um, and they would probably end up with like a roof installation or something. But um, this this unit right here, I'm not sure there would be a less visible location. The rest of the sides of that unit are uh, on St. Paul Street and, and School Street. Mm -hmm. um, so there might be an issue there. Uh, it's possible um, it could be a little further back along the building, like on the other side of the porch, um, which you can't see in this picture. But um, that would get it further from School Street, but it would potentially be a little more sticking out because there's no vegetation there. Um, there is like a little shed thing built onto the side of the building that has like trash and recycling in it. It's possible. Yeah, you can kind of see it behind the car there. I don't know if it would be possible to get it in there or back back there. And I don't know preference wise whether back there would be better versus out front here. Um, but that unit, I'm not sure there would be too many other options. Okay. I think that would be a better location for it from a visual standpoint. I don't know about air circulation and all of that stuff. Uh, back back next to the where right. the car is. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I'm wondering if we could fit this unit there. I'm not really sure if there's the height below that window there. Um, I need to... I would need to measure that. Um, or whether you build something in front of the porch that obscures it or something like that. I'm not sure. What other options? Are there, any, are there any other basement windows behind, further back behind the one that you're planning to go through? In other words, back behind that um, porch. I think there is one more. I think there is one more back there. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not sure there's wall space. And I, <laughs> if I was standing there, I could answer this question easily. Um, but I, I don't know if there's wall space back there. But I, I, I'm 80% sure there is one more basement window back there. But again, you're not sure if there's enough space to provide the proper clearances to mount the unit. It, yeah, without looking, I didn't really do do the <laughs> take any measurements back there. Um, since we had, you know, normally we had had all the utilities in this front area. You can see where the the fill pipes are for the pipe for yes. the oil tank and a few other things. So we had just assumed that this area was the right place, but I hadn't really. Um, look back there. 
one one other option would be to plant a you know a, a five foot tall shrub. Sure. <clears throat> and one one or two in front of it, so it screens it from the street. Yeah, I think that would be possible. Um, all right. Um, well, I guess. How often do you does this committee meet? Would committee members be comfortable either giving them the option to mount it if there's space behind the porch, or if not, to plant a couple of shrubs to screen it from the from School Street? That sounds good to me. That sounds fine to me too. I'm fine with both options. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we just give them both options and then they don't have to come back? That sounds good. I think we need to indicate a preference for the uh, option that further back. Well, we can, we can do that in the, in the comments. We'll right. give them the preference for the location if space allows behind the porch. And if not on this side of the porch, uh, again, as low as possible and screened uh, with some shrubbery. Okay. Yeah, that, that seems reasonable. And then we can take a look um, at the options back further away from the street and uh, see if we can manage something back there. Otherwise, we'll come up with a way to screen it. Okay. Yes, a couple of up upright shrubs that would come up about, you know, four or five feet that would screen it would would Make hide it pretty it. well and not limit the the air of movement through the units. I think we should include the alternate uh, of a, a small little shed roof over the uh, unit to... Yes, to, I, for that, shedding. I think that does two things. It'll avoid splashback onto the siding and also protect the unit from both rain and ice and snow. Yes, no, that's a great idea. Okay, with with those recommendations in mind, I'll go through the criteria. The, there's a number of criteria in the design review district for projects and in this case, number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations. It says additions to addition existing buildings shall respect to be compatible with the size, scale, materials, detailing, and overall character of the primary building. Additions so not, shall not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the original building. And I would say that that's in this particular installation, that's acceptable. Uh, number two, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of time, place, and use. Uh, changes that create a false sense of historical development uh, shall not be undertaken. New construction additions and alterations shall be of their own time. That's acceptable. Proposed landscaping. Now, normally that would be not applicable, but in this case, one of the recommendations would be to plant some shrubs in front of the unit. So we will make a comment that the, that if the second preferred, the second preferred location uh, under between the windows is necessary, then some shrubs to screen it would be acceptable. So I'll call that acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. So again, the siding behind the porch is preferable if possible. Otherwise, the screening with the landscaping would be acceptable. Number six, where applicable development shall be designed to respect views of the state house dome I would say that's not applicable here. <laughs> the next 
item that would apply architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulator trim, other forms of molding or character defining uh, detailing shall be considered in the alteration of the building. Uh, this unit with a very small overhang to deflect water and ice and snow is acceptable. And then lastly, the landscaping screening and site furnishings, mechanical equipment, such as HVAC elements, utility structures, loading docks, trash receptacles, shall be screened from public view, either by siting on rooftops or in rear yard locations, or via screening with fencing and or landscaping. So again, either the location behind the porch or screening with landscaping is acceptable. So again, preferred location behind the porch. Secondly, the second preferred location would be between the windows as in the application. And if so, it would be screened with shrubs and it's there's an allowance for a small pitched covering above the unit to again deflect water, snow and ice. And based on that, for this particular set of criteria, I can move on to the, there's another set of criteria that applies also, additions and alterations to historic buildings. Uh, and it says, this refers to the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved character defining features shall be preserved. Additions do not obscure or undermine the essential form and character of the building. You do not introduce a style and features that are not compatible with the historic building. Uh, and development does not destroy character defining features. And any treatment that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sand blasting should not be approved, which don't apply in this particular case anyway. And then it says new development differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with a massing size scale architectural features of the primary building. That's acceptable. I'd like to add to the criteria comments. It's also reversible. That's more of a precedent thing. Yes. And that, and that is also has to do with any exterior, I'll just say exterior mechanical equipment. mechanical slash HVAC equipment. Is also removable slash reversible. And then there's one other section architectural features. Architectural features on the existing building should be considered in any alteration. And there's no, there's no uh, deteriorated architectural features in this particular application. And those criteria are acceptable as well. So with the recommendations, again, preferred location behind the porch, if that's not if that's not advisable based on the in, a proper installation, then the other installation is to the street side of the porch, again to be screened by landscaping and also with a small pitched miniature, small roof area above the unit to deflect water, snow, and ice. And based on that. Do I hear a vote for approval? Speak your names if you approve. Eric says yes. Ben says yes. Martha says yes. Hannah says yes. 
Steve says yes. So the application is approved. Thank you all. And I will get, get these recommendation sheets filled out and to Audra, and then she can share those with you. Great, thank you. So Austin, this is Meredith, just the, the process, we'll get you these recommendation forms, and because there are some um, basically conditions that we would put in on the permit, we won't issue the permit till we either get the signed forms back from you or you at least email your acknowledgement after you've seen them that you agree with what's been put in there. Okay. Um, but we should, we'll, Steve will get those to us pretty quick and then we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. We'll email them to you. Um, and so you can just email back, yes, that's good, and then we'll be able to issue the permit. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Thank you for participating and good luck with your project. Uh, thank you. All right. I will drop off the call unless uh, there are any other questions. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey. We can move on to the next project, which is for five high school drive for the boat slide and bench. Do we have someone from the project to describe it for us? Hello, uh, both um, me, uh, Sean White and Noah Pollock are here to uh, talk about this. And um, I thought, Noah, that you could describe the, the boat chute itself and um, I could talk about the vegetation. Sure. Sound, sounds good. Hi, everybody. I'm Noah Pollock. I'm on the board of the Friends of Lanuski, and I'm, I'm sitting in a car in East Burke, so um, the video would be <laughs> darkness. So um, we've been working um, at this access site for several years. Um, it's behind the high school. It's uh, the best access to the Lanuski to go from there down to Waterbury. Um, and we've been doing it in honor of... Uh, former board member, the late Bill Haynes, who is a longtime teacher at the school um, and a board member and an avid paddler. Um, and so this is, we're calling this the Bill Haynes Memorial uh, River Access. And um, so over the years, we've been taking it from just an informal, you know, access to a, something that's, you know, worthy of his legacy. We built some stone steps there uh, in 2017. And it's been a popular spot. Um, Folks have been sliding their boats down the side of the bank, and um, as a watershed group, we like to try to protect water, uh, riparian vegetation. So our, our idea is a kind of a little boat slide would encourage people to um, not trample the vegetation and make it easier for folks to get into the get their canoes down to the water. So this is a neat little partnership project with um, the school, We're taking advantage of the extra free time they have to do kind of hands-on projects, working with a couple of teachers. Um, so that's the shoot. The bench is would be also a potential project for um, the, the students to work on over the winter. Um, simple kind of uh, wooden benches that would be anchored with these, what's called helical anchors to keep them from flooding. Um, and then there's also a, the vegetation kind of repairing buffer part of it. Sean, you can talk about that. Uh, okay, so um, at this access point, uh, as Noah said, there have been um, people uh, walking up and down on the banks and often sliding boats, and that has resulted in um, some bare areas that have started to erode. In addition, there's there's several places where there, you know, if, um, if we were to have a ecologically healthy riparian area, it would be vegetated, and those areas aren't. Uh, right around the, the boat access itself, the, I mean, sorry, the stairs and uh, where we would, where the chute would go. And the, um, and then in addition to that, there have been um, uh, some people camping right near that site. Um, so setting up tents and trampling vegetation and clearing uh, areas there. And uh, in 
um, we've been talking to the school about what their needs are, and they feel that um, not only do we need to revegetate those cleared areas uh, along the bank and in, in the wooded uh, areas right around that spot, um, but also maybe do, uh, in conjunction with that, do a little bit of clearing along the bike path. They're thinking that um, uh, by removing some of the um, thicker shrubs that are in the understory that, uh, that you know, pe the fact that passerby could look into the woods from there would maybe discourage camping. Um, so there, it's sort of a, a, you know, clearing and revegetation combined. Um, and we expect that we would, um, there would be more vegetation than clearing. So that the, uh, there, the vegetation there would be healthier. And we are um, are seeing this as you know ecological restoration as much as um, uh, you know maybe more than landscaping or um, uh, or clearing. Please let me know if anyone wants me to share this one. Normally I do would I just I know we were trying to maybe see each other's faces a little bit while we were talking. Do we have images of the benches or the uh, the boat ramp thing? If you have your packet, there's a a sketch of the uh, boat slide design, and then there's a picture of the proposed bench. Does everyone see the boat slide? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you going to repair the steps? Yeah, you know, the river does its thing it wants to do. So we would um, move some of the rocks just to put them back into place. They, um, you know, they're better shape than they were a few years ago. The lowest one did get moved slightly. So yeah, while we're doing it, we'll kind of, we'll just tweak that so it's, it's better used. And it's, you know, you have to be a little humble working along a river and know that the river is stronger than you with small stones. So we'll We'll keep maintaining this as we have over the last few years. Working, it's a good partnership with the with the schools. A good good project for the high school students to help out with. I, I think that's great. It's uh, I think it's important not to create a hazard with the steps. Mm -hmm. Sure. By the way, in the boat slide design, those two rails, I would bevel the top edges of those just to prevent it from marking the boats that are being slid down. Mm -hmm. It might be a good idea not only to, to bevel the top edges at the top and the bottom of the timbers, but also bevel the inside edges to make it easier for a boat to slide smoothly down without damaging the boat or splintering the timbers. Yep. Yeah, I like it. I think um, the idea is having a little bit of tilt on it, although it makes the notches a little challenging, but um, either, yeah, either cutting it with a bevel or just kind of rotating it with the notches so it has the same effect of kind of a little cradle effect. And it's like the, like the cradle on a boat trailer. Right, exactly. And, you know, we'll, we'll test it out with the school's canoes and see how they fit and, you know, if we have to get out some sander or, or cover it with something that text the boat so we can definitely do that you know we want something that people, folks will use <laughs> and do you have a picture of the proposed bench Meredith
Yeah, so this is a, a bench design that I've used in the past with um, kind of volunteers and, and interns. I, I like it because it's, well, it looks nice, it's comfortable, um, and it's made out of, entirely out of two by four, which makes buying materials and cutting it pretty straightforward um, because that whole area does flood. Um, we would plan to anchor it with um, these helical anchors and that also help keep them from getting stolen, but we could move it if we needed to by just unclipping it. Will that be located at the near the top or bottom of the boat wrap? I think it would be on the top and it would be set back a bit. Um, and the idea is, you know, you can have a, folks can go down and have a view of the river, but we want it away so it doesn't get you know, hit by ice. Um, and also we're planting trees in that area too. So it would be, be kind of back, kind of away from the river. How, how far from the bike pass? It would be um, probably about, let's see, there's a trail that goes down into the, the clearing. And so I mean, my, my, our vision is kind of the edge of that clearing. So it's probably about 25 feet in, um, kind of halfway between the bike path and the river, I'd say. Thanks. Any committee members have any questions, comments, or suggestions about either the ramp or the bench? What kind of wood are you going to use in the bench? Um, we will, we're planning to use either cedar or pressure treated uh, timbers. Either either one, we can either get you know the you know cedar from Goodrich Lumber, um, but we want something that's out you know can survive the elements. I would prefer cedar to treated wood. Sure, yeah, we can do that. Um, Not really a design issue. Okay, now, you know, I, I do. It is nicer to work with cedar. I, I agree. <laughs> it's nicer to sit on too. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Otherwise, I can go through the uh, few criteria that apply on this one. Again, the evaluation criteria for all projects. One proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project's located. Uh, there's nothing specific regarding the landscaping, although it's described in the revegetation plan. Montpelier High School Revegetation Plan, Bill Haynes River Access. And again, that's it has general recommendations, all of which seem to be fine at that site. And again, there's nothing more specific. Uh, they they do have some suggested species. And then again, there are species of Friends of the Winooski routinely use in riparian restoration projects and are appropriate for the site. And unless anybody has anything more specific, I think that probably sounds sufficient. I agree. And just so you know, um, for the administrative permit for the rest as other aspect of it, we'll be asking them to provide us with a landscaping plan um, once they've actually decided on what species will be planted so that we'll have that in the file later. Um, but it's a, it's a follow-up item because they okay. won't really know what they're going to plant probably till next spring. Yes. Yeah, would they, need to, the would they need to come thing. back or can that just be clarified as an addendum to this <coughs> permit? Uh, my plan was to have it be clarified as an addendum to the permit, that they would file it with, with our office and we put it in the permit file. It wouldn't have to go through additional approvals. Okay. So based on that, the proposed landscaping, again, with their general description so far is acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, uh, Trash storage fencing, fencing uh, we'll call the bench and the boat ramp acceptable. Development shall be designed to respect views of the State House Dome. And again, that's acceptable here. You probably won't even be able to see it from anywhere but, but the river itself. 
or unless you're sitting on the bench or down by the river. And then there's a, lastly, under landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Uh, site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yard shall be considered within the context of the existing building or its site or, or, and its context. And landscaping is not placed or designed in a manner that would obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements of any kind. Um, there's no fencing there. There's no mechanical equipment, uh, again, other than the boat ramp. Um, and green fencing, such as hedges, planted with narrative or hardy landscape species can be employed as effective buffers and screens. And again, their landscape plan seems to satisfy that. So we'll call that acceptable. And then there's a second set of recommendations uh, projects that do not involve an historic building. Um, one says new development shall incorporate sustainable design and construction methods and materials compatible with historic materials. That's acceptable. And again, the recommendation of cedar using cedar for the bench. And then there's one other recommendation that would apply under materials. New construction should be considered to be compatible if the materials used possess a kind or type that are appropriate to the district. Uh, materials selected shall either fit the neighborhood context or reflect the nature of the use of the structure. And materials may be selected for long-term performance and durability. Again, the cedar for the bench uh, is acceptable. And then lastly, there's a, a criteria, accessory buildings and structures. Uh, structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yards, uh, shall not vis visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of uh, existing building or the site, which is acceptable. And based on the recommendation for cedar for the bench and, and all the other uh, components of the plan. What do I hear a motion to approve? Eric moves. And all in favor, speak your name. Eric. Ben. Martha, this is a yes. Hannah says yes. Steve says yes. Okay, the application is approved. Perfect. Thank you all. We we hope to invite you all to uh, you know an opening sometime in the spring, um, and maybe get you in a canoe, go down the river, try out the slide yourself. <laughs> try out the bench. Or the bench. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, thank you very much for participating, and good luck with your project. And can't wait to see it. All right. Take care. Thank you. We'll be in touch with the recommendation forms. Okay. All right. Thanks, Meredith. Welcome. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Noah. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to review the meeting minutes of September 21st. Does anyone have any questions about or comments about the, the minutes? Uh, I think all we just have you, Steve, and Eric, who were there. Yes, no, you're right. It was just the two of us and Liz, so I guess we will have to table that until the next meeting when Liz shows up. Okay. Does anyone have anything else to add other than our next meeting is on November the 2nd? Uh, one comment I'd like to make is uh, read uh, 
Meredith's memo on the uh, work uh, that the Preservation Commission is going to undertake in a guide uh, for this. Uh, and if you have any suggestions, uh, please uh, let Meredith know. Yep, there's a, I sent you an email. There's an invitation to an HPC meeting tomorrow if you can make it. Um, but comments tomorrow or anytime within the next couple of weeks on thoughts for the design review guidelines would be very, very helpful, especially because these are guidelines that the design review committee will be using to apply these new design review regulations that we've all been working with for the last month or so. Um, and they'll also be for, you know, for the applicants to be able to understand the design review regulations. So any thoughts you have on, on what you want to see in those guidelines, or ways to to just help people understand the regulations would be great. I, I have a quick thought, Meredith, that uh, we ought to put a section in there on materials needed for an application. Yep, and, that, and something like that would probably be up at the beginning of the guidelines, um, as well as having that in the kind of smaller pamphlet booklet that we'll work on once we've got the guidelines done. That's a good point. Anybody else have any other business? No. If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric moves. Adjournment. I second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Eric. Yeah. yeah. Steve. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks Meredith. Thank you. Bye Thank now. You. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Okay, good night. Goodbye.